In this video, we want to show you what BioBricks are, how to use them, and why there are different BioBrick standards like the RCF25 and the RCF10. BioBricks are basically like Lego bricks, but made of DNA. They are ready to use parts of different functions that can easily be assembled in any needed order. They are the scientific golden standard at the heart of the iGEM competition. At the end of the competition, all the teams have to deliver at least one BioBrick, which will be added to the open database of BioBricks of iGEM. This way, the competition helps to construct an open collection of biological building blocks. Biologically, a biobrick is any DNA sequence with a biological function flanked by two standard regions called prefix and suffix. The prefix contains EcoR1 and XBA1 restriction enzyme recognition sites, and the suffix contains SPE1 and PST1. Because XBA1 and SPE1 are complementary, you can bind different biobricks together easily. With that, we come to the point on how to use them. In order to bind two biobricks together, you only need to make one digestion and ligation reaction of both of them at the same time. That means you digest one with EcoR1 and SPE1, and the other with XBA1 and PST1. Additionally, you need a plasmid backbone, which will carry the biobrick fusion and allow you to store it in bacterial cells. The plasmid backbone has to fit to both free ends and therefore has to be digested with EcoR1 and PST1. From each digestion product, you take two microliters and put them all together in a ligation reaction and transform them into electro- or heat-competent cells. Note that XBA1 and SPE1 will form a scar in the ligation, so the biobricks will stay together even if you would digest them again with one of these two enzymes. What we have just described is called RCF10 standard. It is used in many cases but fails for translational fusions. To understand that, we have to look a bit deeper at the scar that the XBA1-SPE1 fusion left. The scar that stays here in the middle is four base pairs. Since four is not divisible by three, the downstream protein will not be in the reading frame of the upstream protein. So the ribosome is going to get really confused and mess up the translation of the downstream protein. To solve that problem, the team from Freiburg developed a new standard, the RCF25. It contains two new restriction sites, NGOM4 and AGE1. The scar left by joining biobricks with the new enzymes will be six base pairs, meaning it's divisible by three and therefore no frame shift will occur. So with this standard, you can build fusion proteins and express them. An even smarter trick comes in when we look at another alteration on the prefix and suffix. In between the N and X, there is a little part of new sequence, a Shindal Gano sequence and a start codon. That means when we cut our biobrick with N to put it downstream of another biobrick, we lose these sequences. But when we cut it with X or E to insert it into a plasmid, we keep them. In the same manner, a stop codon lies between the AGE1 and SPE1 side in the suffix. As the database of biobricks is open for everybody, you can use all the biobricks that have been done in the past years of the competition. They will be provided to you in the distribution kit. To learn what that is and how to use it, check out our How to iGEM number 4 video, link in the description. We hope this video was helpful. For more information on Biobricks, have a look at the links in the video description. We wish you good luck with your project and success in the competition.